Hello and welcome to Can You Hear Me at the Back, the podcast about all things voice and communication. Hi Andrea. Hi Leon. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. In, um, I'm good. 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 We had good food, right? We had great food. We had lovely food. <laughs> I really like this. We yeah. do all of our podcasts this way. Yeah. <laughs> We'd just eat and then do a podcast. We'd eat and do a podcast. I think that's what other podcasters do. Oh. I think we're just catching on to the <laughs> idea that, <laughs> that this is not eat. just a work relationship. This is like, we're actually it's friends. It's deeper. It's deeper. <laughs> he makes soup for me and I eat I make it. soup. I need, just, <laughs> I need to just finish that. Did you? Yeah, crazy. It's great soup. Um, in a word, no, in a sound mm. and a movement, mm-hmm. how are you feeling right now? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna leave that there. Mm. I'm not even gonna explain that. In a mm. sound and no. a movement. <laughs> How are you feeling, Leon? I'm feeling. <laughs> mm. Are you feeling there's lots of like lip and tongue action that happens when you do a sound and a movement? Yeah. I think it's often because we've eaten, <laughs> and I can still taste something delicious. And okay. lamb roke and Josh is delicious. It is. It's, I think that's the definition of delicious. I think when you go into the dictionary, that's what it pops up. Just has a just has a photograph of lamb roke and Josh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay. So what are we talking about, Leon, today? We are talking about paralinguistics. <gasps> Para, means... as in around. Mm-hmm. Surplus two? No, not really <laughs> surplus two. Um, uh, and linguistics as in language. Yes. So like the things around language. Yes. What does that mean? Um, that's a complicated question. But I think... <laughs> um, and as Einstein said, <laughs> you can only explain something simply if you truly understand if it. Truly Let's understand see how we both fare with paralinguistics. <laughs> Um, I always understood paralinguistics as, as, as the things that don't have, um, that don't have, uh, that, that aren't words, but happen outside of the realm of what we understand to be, um, orthographic kind of language. So language that is written or spoken with particular words and sounds. So it's beyond that. So it's like the meaning of something, but it's not the word meaning it's like a comment yes it's like trying to convey um <laughs> i'm just i'm hyper aware of what i'm doing now but it's trying to convey a communicative aspect without using a word mm. <laughs> <laughs> as leon just <laughs> displayed yeah so it's gonna do all of them <sighs> <laughs> so all of the little noises I just made, yes, which could be, which could be really important and could be um, vital to the communication, yes, and yet sometimes, sometimes they're absent, aren't they? Sometimes they're absent or sometimes there are too many of them. Yeah, so it either goes in one direction or the other. Yeah, like I have a lot of Often. students who, instead of acting or <laughs> saying the words, will do a lot of <sighs> uh, <clears throat> kinds of things, mm. which are great, fantastic. Um, but if I'm hearing them after every word, I, I start to get a little bit worried. <laughs> it's those sorts of hesitation sounds as well, isn't it? It's like mm. that, that movable schwa, the movable feast that is a schwa. Where, a, where your hesitation um, sound is and the afterwards. That, mm. that some people don't say uh, some people say ah, uh, some people say eh. eh. Some people say all sorts of other eh, yeah. <laughs> like different sounds. Uh, and it's the sort of neutral resting position of the tongue in the mouth. Yeah. And that's not necessarily the... paralinguistic right. but I guess it kind of isn't really communicating as much as a word would be it's communicating something different I think and I don't think and I think it's communicating something that sometimes words fail to do right and I had this discussion with some students before because they were talking about how okay so 
and I made myself seem really old, I'm not that old, but I was like, if you take your mind back um, to maybe 15 years ago, um, people were really getting on younger people for using the word like, right, as like a filler word. Oh, they still are, and that yeah. is one of, having listened to, back to some of the podcast episodes, mm -hmm. that is one of my major paralinguistics <laughs> like. that is like really annoying <laughs> when you've like been listening to like four episodes back to like back yeah. oh my goodness yeah and i don't even notice that i'm doing it yeah well i think i think most people don't um <laughs> mine is um but uh i the reason i brought it up is because people were saying that it was a roundabout way of doing something right so a lot of people especially older people in the older generations were like well if you really knew how you felt about it you would have to compare it to something uh, and you wouldn't have to be like, well, it's like this, or it's like that, or like when this, right? They would, you, you would just say it. Uh, but could, because I think we had this conversation. I'm not sure if we had it on the podcast, but I know we've had this conversation. <laughs> about <laughs> We talk a lot. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Um, about how as, as, time has, um, as, as time has progressed, um, that our way of communicating with each other has changed. It was definitely, maybe you did say it on the podcast. Mm. You were talking about, um, we were talking about texting. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And and how, and and I think like has something to do with it, where it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you're you not sure about something, but it is it is what we use to sometimes say, yes, I'm understanding what you're saying. Yeah, it's kind of like this. Or that I'm aligning myself with you like that one time. You know, what I mean, like it can be, it can mean a lot of other things yeah. other than just like. It doesn't have to mean similar to. Right. Because it can also be demonstrative. Yes. So there's lots of things where people explain a situation without actually saying what happened. R right. So like, Andre was like, mm, right, and I was like, mm, yeah. So Andre was like, mm, right, yeah, and then so you don't. I haven't actually right. explained what you're doing. I've right. demonstrated what you've done. Yeah. And I've said. And I've used like as a synonym for behaved in this way. Yeah. Um, or said the following. Mm. Um, you know, and so when you're looking, if you're looking at it from a kind of explanatory... Expl explanatory. Expl <laughs> wow. Wow. All use of it's vocabulary late. just left my body. Um, it's been a very long week. It's, it's late. It's also late. The if you if you look at it in terms of an explanation, yes. that it that it really doesn't. Um, you have to be you have to be in the room to understand what it is that somebody's doing because it's about the action of doing that rather than an explanation of it. Yeah. In linguistic terms, in in descriptive terms. Yeah, you're demonstrating it. You're bringing it back to that time. Um, and I think there is something about paralinguistic features that feel quite present, right? That it that yeah. it's something that happens right now. It's not something that I can really recall. And it and it's very specific in that sense. Like you know when somebody goes, oh, right? Like you yeah. you can almost like feel what happens in their yeah. body. Um, and that, I mean it's it's also very cultural, but. Um, but but there is something that brings you to a, a specific moment, a specific feeling, um, and a specific reaction that you're like, oh, really? Yeah, like that was that wasn't good. Mm. I heard a oh, kind of a thing. My mom does that all the time. And in terms of acting, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's really important that those paralinguistics are there when they're supposed to be there, yes. and not peppered about because you can't remember the line. Mm. And sometimes, you did a really beautiful thing just now, which is that you were about to, you were trying to think of the word, and in trying to think of the word, you paused slightly. Yes. Because you were, it's the thing that I'm about to say, and you stopped chose the right word and then carried on because it wasn't right there at, at, at your fingertips and the tip of your tongue. Right. So in order to do that, you had to stop for a second and then there was a, and there was a release of the tongue from the roof of the mouth. So you had this like slight yes. tongue click and then, which is fine. I mean, uh, usually we edit them out, but we won't this time. <laughs> but then, but those sorts of things are really important because 
it shows that you are actually thinking in the moment. Mm -hmm. It is about being in the moment. Mm -hmm. Because you don't always know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah. And sometimes you do know what you're going to say. So if you put some kind of paralinguistic cue or clue or hesitation in yeah. before something about which you're really certain, it undermines what you're saying and yeah. therefore it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Whereas if you then, if there is a paralinguistic written in like oh or ah uh, or hmm or hmm, uh, those kind of exclamations. Yeah that then those moments are really important to acknowledge and what is the, what's the underlying meaning, what's the subtext of that paralinguistic mm. in the life of that character, in the life of the scene, in the life of the play, yeah. in the life of the world. Isn't that, it's always that thing of what are you doing when you're not doing, mm. right? And I think paralinguistics kind of fits into that beautifully. It's, it's the thing that you do when you're not doing. It's the thing that you you do when you're not speaking, when you're thinking, contemplating, or, or, or setting something up for, for whatever is, is next, but it's the not the doing, it's within something, right? So it's not, I'm going to do this thing because you don't have either the language or the wherewithal or whatever is happening to do that. So you have to kind of stop and go, uh, Oh, <laughs> mm. this is like this is what it is, uh, and there's a sound for it, and there's a and there's often a behavior I think uh, or a gesture that goes with that as well. My mine tends to be this uh, <laughs> kind of a weird you know, thing. No, like kind of hold it's your hands like, thing. Mm, I get very I get very like grandmothery like too. <laughs> but then that's about meta communication, isn't it? A meta mm. that is that it, it's about communication, but it's not. It's not linguistic it is linguistic I suppose it's sonic but it's it's sound wise yeah. there is a communication yeah with the voice but then with the gesture it then becomes again about communication because then it becomes about um it's always like it's that classic thing of actors saying what do I do with my hands <laughs> well yeah what do you do with your hands? <laughs> you and if you're thinking hands? about what you're doing with your hands, then you're not really understanding what it is you're communicating because your hands will take care of themselves. Yeah. Because they do in real life. You don't spend your life going, oh, I wish I could order this cappuccino, but my hands are right there. <laughs> like, nobody does that. <laughs> what what, what are, do I do with my hands? What are they going to do while I'm ordering this coffee? Like, no, one, no one's going to... I mean, I really hope you're not doing that whilst listening to this podcast and Some wondering... people might be. Yeah. I can't. I can't. But it is one of those things. I haven't heard it for a while, but it is one of those things that you do hear quite often. Mm. You just, people they don't just don't know what to do with their body in that mm. moment because it's too they're too um, aware of what they're doing, yeah, and not and therefore there's they're not connected to the moment. They're outside of the moment and they're being observers of the moment, mm -hmm. and so therefore they're not really in it. They're outside of it by definition. Yeah. And so that then they kind of realise that they've got extremities. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do with them? Um, so I think that the gesture, as you said already, but the, the, the gesture really integrates into that. That yeah. so many people have this thing where they do something physical and vocal at the same time that is not um, a word, but it is a response. It's a, it's a reaction. Yeah. There's a beautiful story that Elaine Stritch, the dear departed Elaine Stritch, tells on her one-woman show. Um, uh, DVD is available. Um, <laughs> you can hear me laughing in the background. Um, <laughs> I was miles there. away. I was there. No, I was there in that performance. Were you? Yeah. And um, she talks about not remembering the words. can't remember to which song it is. But she talks about not remembering the words. She said, and all I, I did was just put both hands on my mouth. And she literally just put both <laughs> fists inside her mouth and went, this, and just made this noise because she couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, no, and just couldn't. And just put her hands in her mouth, which I think is a beautiful image <laughs> of just Elaine Stritch with just... both hands with her, in her mouth. And a little hat on. <laughs> and... So there's that sort of thing, but then I also, one of the things I teach a lot is um, is the difference in breath response right. 
to a question. Yeah. So um, one of the things I talk about quite often is that when you're five and you're in class and you're at, at school in class and you know the answer, mm -hmm. that you don't go <sighs> and raise your hand. You go <gasps> and you know what the answer is. So that's that sort of that indicates, oh, I know the answer. Yeah. And I'm really excited that I know the answer. And there's an emotion attached to it. Mm -hmm. There's a thought attached to it. There's mm -hmm. a gesture attached to it. And there's energy attached to it. And then often, in, in my case at least, I would go, oh, I know the answer. Yeah. And then they wouldn't choose me because I always knew the answer. <laughs> and, then, and then they were like, mm, we'll choose somebody else. So I just stopped getting excited about it because I just used to sit there and look out the window eventually. Because oh. um, I just got bored because nobody asked me what the answer was. Oh. <laughs> Precocious child. But, um, but that's really interesting as well. And I, what I find is that there is a lot of discussion in voice um, about breath. Yes. Rightly or wrongly. Um, but there is a lot of discussion yeah. about breath. Yeah. And sometimes that breath um, is insisted upon being consistent. Right. And consistently placed in one place. Yeah. And when we observe human beings, that's just not true. Yeah. Yes. And there's so many, isn't it? Because there's that's a that's such a big thing, Leon. I know. I just dropped a massive <laughs> like bomb, guys. A really that's big like a whole thing. series. Here we are on episode eleven, <laughs> and I'm like, so for the following nine uh, episodes, we're going to talk just about breath. Talk about breath because I think there, because I, I, I mean that there is a truth to that, but then there's also kind of a truth of that we we don't act the same way on stage that we do in everyday life. I think because the cir the circumstances are a little bit different. Yeah. Um, just, just on, just on a kind of the, the fact that you're in a very different space and that you're kind of doing something a little bit differently. That doesn't mean that you wouldn't act that way in, that, that the behavior wouldn't be the same if you were, uh, if you were in a different circumstance, you might, the behavior could still be the same, but by, it, it's like the observer's paradox, right? By the... <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back again. to research. <laughs> I'm a research idea. But by the by the sheer notion of somebody being there and observing you, the behavior automatically changes. changes. Um, and so I think I mean again, breath is there's a whole lot that we could say about breath. I think there is a I think there is um, an argument to be made that sometimes we do paralinguistics not for us, but for other people. Mm. <laughs> mm. like that right and um and i think that that thing with the breath and knowing the idea is the same thing i think sometimes it's not necessarily it's not necessarily me going oh i know the answer oh i know the answer it's that i know the answer i want them to know it i know the answer <gasps> ah right and having that be the yeah. thing um but i mean but i think that goes back to the thoughts like what is like yeah where does the thought where does the thought happen be? and at what point and and then what's the response? What's the sort of appropriate or at times inappropriate response, okay. depending on your age and socialization skills <laughs> but, or level of socialization. But that's, but that's really important. And that yes. sort of, that is a paralinguistic cue, clue mm. to what it is that's happening inside you. Mm. Um, and it remind, thinking about a comment that I made the other day about listening to um, another podcast and the, um, parent of Curtis Flowers, the mother of Curtis Flowers, who would say um, that she was pleased to see somebody and then go, mm -hmm. Oh yes, I do remember that, yeah. And that kind of comment on, the paralinguistic comment mm -hmm. on what she had said, which ostensibly, if you were to turn mm -hmm. into language, yeah. would be, oh yes I am. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I'm pleased to see you folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you go, that's a really specific way of kind of reaffirming the statement. Yeah. Rather than undermining it. Yeah. Or disagreeing with something. Or... It, and it means so many different things. And I think, like, for instance, because my grandmother does that. Mm -hmm. mm. But, um, uh, and, and she doesn't do it as much now. But I remember growing up that she used to kind of sit there and somebody be talking and she'd go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mhm, mm mhm, mm um, and then at the end of the conversation, you'd be, I'd, you know, you'd ask her questions. She'd be like, I don't know, and I was like, 
But because she wasn't listening, but all she was doing was going, oh, no, I want you to feel that you're being listened to. <laughs> Which I feel like it's a very Southern American thing to do. Um, just like the, oh, bless you. Bless your heart. That's just, Like, it's one of those things where it's like, it doesn't mean what you think it means, but I'm doing it so you can have that feeling. <laughs> Which makes me think, like, is that is the subtext to that? Oh, you're still talking, yeah. and you're still and talking. And it can be, yeah, it can talking. be both. Okay. It can be both because, and and I think the really interesting thing with that is that yes, it can be both, but it can also be with a slight change of tune. A mm-hmm could be a mm-hmm, and a mm-hmm. Yeah, it's quite like that's a different judgment than a mm-hmm, right? And those are, but and they're quite subtle things. Yeah, uh, but you know one. <laughs> it's just like you know when somebody asks you a question and this happens a lot in classrooms and I and I am guilty of doing this as well when you and he's like um he's like so are we certain that um Berlin is the capital of Germany are we okay with that that's that's something we want to go with okay yeah right which is clearly that the answer is the, no wait she's signaling to me that that is not that's not right that's not, <laughs> that's not right Despite I'm gonna question the fact everything being true yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yes but you're like and then and then if you go no 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 and then then I've just played it I've played a terrible trick on you because I've done it with my voice yeah. but then the fact is there so I think that I mean when we talk about like different levels of language there there's always the the direct kind of um, prescriptive meaning of it, what it looks like on the page, and then there's always the subtext, and I think the paralinguistic lives within the subtext, those things that we, on the surface, wouldn't necessarily read as meaning something, um, but given the context, given the body language, given the history, um, go on to mean something a little bit different, something more. It enhances what is already in the prescriptive part of the grammar, or the language. I threw a lot. <laughs> I threw a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's what I... I. It's the reason um, that if I'm working on text um, with a group uh, a group of actors, that I work from sound and I, and I build from there. So we build on, on a, depending on how long I have, vowels um, and then consonants and then the word um, and then piecing the words together because I think in between the sound becoming a word is where the paralinguistic lives. Ooh, say that again. <laughs> in between the sound... And the word is where the paralinguistic lives. Right? So if I were to think about... So if I... Cause I I'm currently doing this. I'm making... Um, in, we're, we're classifying sounds, nasals, fricatives, um, mm -hmm. plosives. Um, and I say, okay, give me um, give me a emotion with um, with just plosives, right? And normally you get kind of a thing, um, which is really fun to do. But um, <laughs> and um, but and then I say, okay, so we're gonna do this. Um, I'll give you a scenario, and you can only use the plosive of it. Um, and you'll get people who do a right or a thing, right? Um, and you quickly and you quickly start to realize what is normal or, or what feels normal to them. So an mm might feel normal to them um, because that is a paralinguistic, right? People do do that. People go mm, right? Whereas people don't go, right? But people might go, right? So you might mm. still be using the plosive. Just it might be, not be a, it might be a, right? Instead, mm. um, and but that is a paralinguistic. If we add that on to, if we add, if we string the consonant and put the vowel into it, and then po probably another consonant because English is a CVC um, language, um, and, and it becomes a word, right? Mm -hmm. um, you still have the sonic properties making up the word, right? So you still have those sounds. They've just been adding. They've just been adding a different meaning to it, mm. and it's again trying to get them to separate. Um, the meaning of a word and the sonic properties of a word sometimes and honoring yeah. both right so honoring that I am making this sound which might which could evoke a feeling of anger could evoke a feeling of annoyance could evoke like, so many things could happen with the p sound right but I'm putting it on a word like um, 
Persephone, I don't know. I, I just watched Hades Town. So <laughs> I'm, in a very, I'm in a very Greek kind of mood. Um, just or for a persevere. Nice simple word. Yeah. <laughs> persevere, yeah. right? Um, but that there is there is still kind of a punch to a puff, a persevere, right? That that's not going to be a smooth kind of onset to your word. Um, but then having them understand that there is a paralinguistics that does come with a puff. And what is that? Mm. And tapping into that. And maybe we can apply that to the word. Maybe maybe, maybe that's not what we need in this moment. We, maybe we're going in a different direction with the puff. So the level of paralinguistic context within articulation and diction. Mm. And therefore, how do you feel about the mm. word that you are using? Mm -hmm. And what is the intention behind that word? And the clarity of the intention. Mm -hmm. Which I say on a such a regular basis, it's not even funny. I say it all the time. The clarity of the intention <laughs> comes from the clarity of the articulation. Yes. I say that Hello. all the time. I was like, you can have the most amazing speech. You can hit all of the right emotional beats. Um, and you can be doing wonderful body work. And it can all just flow really well. But if I don't understand what's coming out of your mouth, then how do I... <laughs> And do what do you feel about it? Mm, yeah. Otherwise, who cares? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And it's not that you are feeling it. Also something I say all the time. It's not that you are feeling it. It is what you feel about it. Mm. And that you make me feel and understand it. Because otherwise, why am I paying you? Mm. You should be paying me <laughs> because I you're a having a great time, <laughs> and I, frankly, I'm am not. bored. <laughs> I'm not. I think I, I think that's the, the biggest thing. To I'm watching it. you enjoy yourself. <laughs> that's the biggest thing I impress upon um, a lot of my students. Though, is that a it's not about you, um, <laughs> but it is about um, an audience member. Um, but b that if I don't. If, if the thought is not linked with the speech, then I don't really care because all mm. I'm seeing is a show. And then mm -hmm. you're just showing me things. Mm. You're not processing it and ha having opinions about it yeah. and, you know, and living with it. You're just, you're putting it on display for me. And for me, that happens within the articulation, but that it does happen within the paralinguistics of it because that, in those moments of the paralinguistic is where we find uh, thought. Literally, mm -hmm. it is when we have an, uh, um, that, that's a thought, right? Um, and the frustration of trying to take that thought and to put it into words. And people like to watch that. That's, that Otherwise it feels inauthentic. It feels fake. It feels over-rehearsed. Mm. It feels disingenuous. Mm. So when you watch somebody speak words that seem like they are just is coming very freely mm. it feels like it feels like it has been rehearsed yeah or at least they've said that thing many many times mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't want you want to feel that somebody is in the moment and really thinking those things and really feeling those things and feeling those feelings and thinking those thoughts mm. and communicating those sensations that they have internally to you because clearly then they are caring about them and they they feel them and they are connected to them and want to communicate it mm. and the burden of communication <laughs> is on them and they're flouting no maxims <laughs> but the point is that they're really trying to communicate as opposed to trying to show that they are communicating yes yes yeah Ooh. Oh, that's quite good right that was nice I don't, know how, I don't think i could repeat that no luckily we recorded it <laughs> So paralinguistics are the are the, the little ticks and clicks and sh and sounds that are not words that surround the language that we use. Yes, yes, the formal properties of language. Yes, for some reason I felt the need to quantify that. That's all right. Um, I mean, is it scalar or is it? Uh, <laughs> um, no, linguistic jokes. It's so funny. And only to us. <laughs> <laughs> and one person somewhere, somewhere giggling to themselves on a yeah. train somewhere. Um, Andrea? Yes? What have you realised through the course of our podcast episode 11 
Harold and Christo. I, th I I really thought you were going to say throughout your life, and I was and I froze. And no, I just in the last 25, 30 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> what have I realized? One that I say um a lot more than I ever thought I did. Um, <laughs> and that articulation and clarity are just as important as the paralinguistics of a speech. I wasn't mm. sure whether that was going to end or not. <laughs> uh, mm. Leon, what have you learned? I learned and realised. I've realised and learned that Well, in preparing for this episode yeah. <laughs> I was listening to some of our, our previous episodes mm -hmm. and listening out for my own and your paralinguistics. Oh gosh. And yes, um is one that you do. I do. And it is interesting that you do an um even though you're certain of what you want to say because you sort of Hold yourself back before you say something. Sometimes I edit myself a lot. Yeah, it's like a self. Words are very important to me. It's a, yeah, but it's a self censorship moment, and it's really interesting. Which you do at certain times, and at other times you don't do. Yeah. So, like when we're just having a chat, you're okay. But then, we, if yeah. you're trying to formalize something, it tends to happen more. Yeah. Um, I say like an awful lot. You do. And I don't notice doing it because I'm not focused on the words that I use as much as I am the concept that I'm trying to explain. Mm. I'm much more interested in in the in the sort of broader picture, in the grander scheme, in the the idealized version mm -hmm. than I am the specifics of the explanation. Yeah. Which is not true in my writing, but it is true in my speech. See I feel like my, my writing is almost the exact opposite. Whereas, like, <laughs> we've learned something very, very interesting about ourselves today. Because I feel like I don't care about almost the specifics of it in my writing. But I am specific in my language, and I think that has to do with the teachers that I've had. Because I get, mm. I get quite... If you use a different word, the whole thing changes for me. Because it's, it's put on, it's, it's put a whole different context in it. So it's in, and it could be as simple as, as you saying rubbish instead of saying garbage. And I have to go, oh, how many places say rubbish and not garbage? And, I'm, I'm, and that's where I am. Mm. And it's taken me to something else. And so I try to be specific with my language, especially when I teach. Because I'm like, well, if that happens to me, God knows what happens to my students when I speak. So I'm like, mm, I want to get the word or the words that that fire the neurons and you go bing, that's it right doesn't I always think, work I think I tend to explain things three times I try to um, which might be something I've been conditioned into doing <laughs> it might just be something that I do because I like to talk but I think it's I, I explain something in the first way that it seems to appear to me mm -hmm. And then I gauge the response of the audience, <laughs> whether that's a room full of teachers, whether that's a room full of voice coaches, whether that's a room full of students, um, or a room full of paying punters. I don't know, but it's um, it's one of those things that. Oh Chris, Who knows um, where you are? I don't know where I am most of the time. <laughs> but that, but then so I'll, I'll gauge what their response is, and then I'll ask if that makes sense, or do you understand? what that means or yes. back to that again but yes. I, I often ask people if does that make sense to you and then they'll say well no okay fine so then I'll explain it in a slightly different way so I often have to explain things a number of times yeah because it's not it's not a the the thought that the, the concept that I'm trying to explain is multifaceted, yeah, and it's schematized. So it ha I have to kind of give some more context to it. Yeah. So sometimes I'm trying to find out what the context is that stops you from really identifying what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. So then sometimes I have to explain the context and then come back at it. And sometimes I say verbatim what I said the first time. Yeah. But with the context, the piece falls into place. Yeah. Um. It's the premise too. Making sure that you guys are on the same, have the same premise in order to go into whatever the concept is. Because if you don't believe in gravity, and I do believe in gravity, then everything else we're going to talk about is just going to be... Just You're in gravity in defining <laughs> terms, honestly. <laughs> it's my favourite thing to do. We have to, I think we should try and do one podcast where I don't say like, you don't say um, and nobody <laughs> mentions defining terms. <laughs> 
I, I'm up for the challenge. It's going to be so challenging. I don't think it's going to happen. I know what I'm going to do instead of say, um. But I can't tell you. <laughs> You've already, already got I've plans. already got it. I've already strategized. But I can't tell you because then that's all you're going to think about. Because then I'll pick up on that <laughs> yeah. and be like, mm, fudge, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Paralinguistics. If you want to contact us about anything we said in the podcast, you can reach us on Twitter at Can You Hear Pod or on Instagram at Can You Hear Me Podcast. Or you can search for us on Facebook and on YouTube. Or email us at Can You Hear Me at the back at gmail.com. You can find me, Leon, on Twitter at Leon Trayman. Or me, Andrea, at Andrea Fudge on Twitter. Please support the podcast by subscribing as a patron on our Patreon site. The link is in the show notes. To keep the podcast advertisement free, as well as get access to cool extra stuff, discounts, bonus episodes, as well as supporting ongoing voice research funding as well. Okay, love you, bye!